Hey everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a quick video for you. I'm gonna be showing you how to use the X-Tool RA2 rotary tool, and we're gonna be using the chuck. The RA2 can be used with the rollers or the chuck, but from what I've gathered, the chuck seems to be the better setup. Seems to be a little bit easier to take your measurements and it engraves a little bit more accurately. Not that the roller doesn't work, but this seems to be the go-to. Anyways, we are gonna be engraving the new machine logo right there on this overpriced Milwaukee Packout tumbler. And we're gonna be giving away this tumbler to one of you, the viewers. And all you have to do to win this is like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment saying machine, machine, and you'll be entered. And on June 1st, we will pull a name to see who won this thing and we'll announce it or contact you. One way or another, we'll get this thing to you. And what we're gonna be using to engrave using this RA2 rotary tool is the X-Tool S1. This is by far my favorite laser. It's very user-friendly, very versatile. It could pretty much do whatever you need it to do. It is a diode laser. It has interchangeable heads. I have the 20 watt diode laser. They also offer a 40 watt and they offer a two watt infrared laser. Not too familiar with the infrared laser. If you are interested in the X-Tool S1, I did make a full on review video where I covered all of the specs and details on this thing. I'll leave a link for that video in the description along with links for the S1 and the rotary tool. And I do have a discount code for X-Tool that'll save you like 80 bucks if you spend like 900 or a thousand. I don't know, it's not much, but every little bit counts. So first things first, let's get this set up with the tumbler in it, show you how it kind of mounts inside there, and then we'll get it placed into the S1, and then we'll start going over the design. Okay, like I mentioned, this is the chuck setup, and you can see it's got like a chuck like you would see on a drill, and you got your chuck key right here to loosen it and tighten it, and as you tighten it, these jaws all grip, and when you loosen it, the jaw spread apart, pretty basic. And there are different style teeth for the jaw. And what we're gonna do is take our Milwaukee overpriced tumbler, peel all this crap off, pull the lid off, and the instructions on how to use a tumbler. You don't need that. Now you can see on this tumbler where Milwaukee Packout is engraved. Basically there's a coating on here and we are going to burn through that coating to get down to nice clean stainless steel. Now that sounds like it's easy, but there is some fine tuning that you need to do. And in order to do that, I used a sacrificial overpriced Yeti koozie, which I will never use because I drink my beer way too fast and it has no chance of getting warm. So I did some engraving on here and I totally fucked this thing up, which is okay because that was the whole point of it. It's testing. So my first one right here looks like absolute dog I don't know what the hell I did. I think the, the laser was too far away. This was actually on the P2. I wasn't a big fan of using the P2 with the rotary tool. That's why we're using the S1. And then I did this one and you can see it's a little bit darker. So on that darker engraving, I had the power set at 100%. I thought that you like really needed to just freaking power through that shit. I was wrong. So what I did was I contacted my new buddy, Emily over at Wild Willow. She has a YouTube channel. And she is, in my opinion, an expert in laser engraving. She is very well versed on light burn, which is something that I am not. She also has an X-Tool S1. I think she does. Yeah. Yeah, she does. She does custom engraved leather patches and then she presses them on hats and sells them. She also does some really cool signs. Just go check out her channel. I'll leave a link for her channel down in the description. She's trying to get to 10,000 subs by the end of the year. So help her out and subscribe. Anyways, she told me, no, that's way too hot. You need to dial that thing down. And that's exactly what I did. And I ended up getting perfect engravings, nice, clean, shiny stainless steel. So I have my settings documented for burning through the coatings on these tumblers. I'd imagine that the coating is probably pretty similar on all of them. I will share those settings with you as well in this video. So let's get this thing set up and we'll look at the design. So what we're gonna do is take our tumbler and we're going to fit it in there. There are different threaded holes on this chuck so that you can slide these teeth further out or closer in depending on the diameter of your tumbler or cylinder, whatever the hell you're putting in it. So we're gonna slide this thing in. We're gonna use our chuck key and we're just gonna snug it down. We don't have to get crazy with it. And then that is it. You can see it's spinning nice and even. Doesn't have a wobble to it or nothing that's important. 
So now we're gonna place the RA2 into the S1 and it should be orientated where the chuck is on the right side. We're just gonna set it down here somewhere in the middle. Now in order to use the rotary tool in the S1, you are gonna need the riser base which is the lower section from this point down. It has different tray levels and you can use this for the conveyor system or the rotary tool. Or if you have an object that you're engraving on that's a little bit taller, you can lower the tray down. If you're gonna get the S1, I would highly recommend getting the riser base. It's well worth it. it gives you way more options. Next important thing is to square up your rotary tool with the machine. Machine, very important. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. The professional way to do it is to build yourself a template. You can actually use the engraver to cut that template out and then you would set your rotary tool into it and it would basically hold it square to the machine every single time and put it in the same place. Or the generic way to do it, which is how I'm gonna do it. First, I'm gonna plug this thing in. So this thing just plugs in right in that front right corner. It's pretty self-explanatory. They give you all the patch cables that you need for any different laser that you might have. So we're gonna bring the X gantry forward and we're gonna use the gantry to square up the rotary tool. So we're gonna look at that edge. I'm gonna kind of look down on it and square it up with the rotary tool. Now that step is very important because if you don't get that thing squared up perfectly, then it's going to engrave crooked on your tumbler and it'll look like absolute <laughs> So take your time, square it up. All right, for now, we're good here. Let's jump on the laptop and get on Xtool Creative Space which is Xtool's own software that's designed and built around their lasers, which makes it very easy to use and very user-friendly. That's the same thing. <laughs> Idiot. So here we are in Xtool Creative Space, and you can see I already have some designs here. They're already sized. All right, so here we wanna make sure that we're selected on laser cylindrical. That's because we're using the rotary tool. And right here, we're gonna make sure that we select the chuck. And then we are going to measure the diameter of the cylinder that we're gonna be engraving on. And we're right about three and a half inches. So we're going to plug that number in right here. And then you can see it automatically calculates the perimeter. So if you see this grid pattern right here, this is the exact work area on the X-Tool S1. And this red crosshair right here, that is exactly where the laser is placed right now. So in order to place our design right where we want it on that tumbler, we need to move the laser head right onto the tumbler exactly where we want it to start engraving. And I prefer to do it right in the center. I should have done this before I put it in the laser. So you can see where the Milwaukee engraving is. It's kind of between these two grooves right here in the tumbler and it's centered on it. And there's three of these grooves one there, one here, and one here. So I want to have the machine logo on the exact opposite side of the Milwaukee logo. So right in between these two grooves is where I want to be. So I'm going to measure the tip of these two grooves and I'm going to make a little center mark on this masking tape and then I know where to place the crosshairs on the tumbler. So we're about two and a half inches. So we want to be right at an inch and a quarter. I'm trying to do this so you can see. There is our center mark. And as far as center up and down here, I'm just gonna kinda eye it. So now we wanna take that center mark and we wanna move it to the very top. We're gonna have to kinda eye this. I don't really know of a good way to actually measure it at top dead center, but it's easy enough to just kinda look down it. And then we're going to move the laser head crosshairs right over. I'll be able to put that right on my center mark and just kind of move it. The crosshair is actually about the same width as this section that we're going to be engraving in, so I can kind of center it that way, which is kind of nice. That won't work out that way every time, but... So now that we have that centered on the cuff, the next thing that we need to do is take a measurement. We need to measure that distance from the laser head to the surface that we're going to be engraving on, and the X-Tool S1 has this little probe right here, which will actually pop down, and it will take a little reading, and it'll plug that into the software. It's really easy to do. So I'm going to hit this little crosshair right here in the software. And once I hit that, that probe pops out, comes down, touches it, and then it'll go back in the corner and reset itself. And then it should reset right back to where it was. Perfect. So now we are completely set and ready on the laser engraver itself with the tumbler. We got the crosshair set. We've got our distance measured. We have everything placed exactly where it needs to be. We just need to fine tune the design and the placement and we'll be ready to engrave. It's actually really easy. All right, now you can see that the crosshair is moved over. So that crosshair is exactly centered over the cup where we want it to be. 
So I'm gonna take this smaller logo and move it out of the way for right now. And I'm actually going to hit ignore on that one. I do not want that one to engrave yet. And we're gonna ignore that one as well. I just had a couple of YouTube logos. I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. And we're going to take the machine logo and we're going to center that. And if I zoom in, you can actually see these blue lines kind of appear. And that's telling you that it's center. And I've already sized the machine logo. You can see right here it's four inches tall, which is going to be this way, and then almost an inch and a half wide. And in order to get that measurement, I basically just measured on the tumbler to see how large I wanted it to be. And then I just plugged that number into the software. Pretty easy. Now we have the machine logo here set to output. We have it set to engrave. Our power setting is on 28. Our speed setting is on 120. We're going to do one pass. And I did this at 300 lines per centimeter. That is the max lines per centimeter that you can do on this thing. When I was doing my test runs, it seemed to give me a cleaner engraving and the extra residual material that I had to kind of wipe off, which you'll see here after we engrave on it, it seemed to be a little bit easier to do. So that's what I'm going with. So at this point, we're ready to go with the first engraving on this tumbler. And what we're gonna do just to make sure the placement is right is we're gonna frame it, which is also really easy. We're gonna come down here and hit this framing button. And then it's asking us to hit that little button on the front and it'll frame it out and then we can complete that. So all I have to do is hit this button right here and it should frame out where it's gonna be. A little probe was pretty close to hitting that jaw, but it didn't, so that's good. All right, we are ready to go with our first engraving. We're gonna hit frame completed and then we're gonna hit process. All we have to do is close the lid and hit start and it's going to send that file over which was super quick and I have one more thing to show you if you're new to the S1 we are going to be using the X-Tool air purifier this thing's pretty badass just has a tube that goes up connects to the back for the exhaust and that purifier will basically filter that air blow it back out into the area and you won't smell it every once in a while if you're doing a lot of engraving you will catch a little whiff of it but if you did not have that thing it would basically smoke you out of this room. So you either need to have an exhaust system set up in your shop or garage or the air purifier. Up here, you'll notice we also have the X-Tool Air Assist. This is powered from the S1 and it is controlled from the S1, which is really nice. So you just put it in auto and if you're cutting or engraving, it will set the air pressure accordingly. All right, here we go. All right, the program is complete. Let's see what we got here. All right, that looks pretty good. You can see there's a little bit of haze on there. That's okay, we're gonna clean that off here, but I'm gonna leave everything right where it's at because I wanna do one more engraving with the Spicer Designs logo and a little YouTube logo underneath it down here. And in order to do that, you can see that the cup kind of offsets down a little bit. So we'll have to take another measurement down here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the laser down here. We're gonna keep it on our center mark and I want that little logo to be right, right there toward the bottom. So we'll pull another measurement, click on the crosshairs again. Very nice, it's quite the probe. All right, we can close this up. All right, back on Creative Space, we're going to highlight machine and we're going to ignore it. We're going to highlight all of this and hit output. And I can see the power settings are different. So I'm gonna have to change them. 28 and 120. So we're gonna go 28, 120, 300 lines. 
engrave up okay so now you can see where the crosshairs are at we're gonna go ahead and highlight this we're gonna move it over and we're going to center it up on there this one's harder okay there's a blue all right there we go centered up it's that easy so i'm gonna frame it one more time just to be sure you know i don't want to this thing up that will be good All right, the placement looks good. Pop it out of the chuck here. Everything looks good so far. And you can see it's not nearly as shiny as the stainless right here, but we're gonna fix that here in a minute. All right, so what I'm gonna do is use some simple green. I know there's other ways to do this. This is just what I had and this is, you know, it worked for me. So I'm just gonna hit it with some simple green. And I'm gonna use a very light abrasive Scotch-Brite pad. I'm just gonna spray some here in the corner and I'm gonna lightly lightly just kind of polish this back and forth and you can already see it's getting shinier i like shiny things that's looking really good this is where we're really gonna see it oh yeah all right hit it one more time i got a clean microfiber towel wipe that thing off look at that that looks amazing hopefully this comes through to you guys as good as i see it i mean this thing looks perfect all of the edges are like super crisp that s1 did an awesome job and i mean that's only the 20 watt diode laser head it looks just as good as the one from milwaukee they look exactly the same so you get a clean quality finish looks like it came right from the factory that way and you could do it right from your own garage, pretty nice. And it looks like it came out nice and parallel to that top lip there. Everything is nice and square on the tumbler. All right, so overall, I'm very happy with the way that this tumbler came out. The X-Tool S1 did an awesome job, very crisp. I gotta say, I like it. Is that crooked? No, better not be. In millimeters, 18 millimeters. 18 millimeters, perfect. Oh, it's because I got one boot on, damn it. And thanks again to Emily from Wild Willow for her help and guidance uh, getting these settings right for me. I do appreciate it. Make sure you check her channel out, very good stuff there. Another great channel if you're into laser engraving is Adam from Hometown Acres. His channel is mostly based around firewood processing, but what he's been doing is incorporating some of the wood that he cuts on a sawmill, and he's using that material to engrave signs on his X-Tool S1 and selling them and he's got some pretty interesting content there so i'll leave a link for his channel down in the description as well definitely go check him out he does have a larger following and he does a pretty good job putting videos together i mean it's okay anyways that is going to wrap this one up if you want to win this tumbler with the new machine logo on it make sure you like subscribe and leave a comment machine and you'll be entered to win this i'll probably do a drawing somewhere around june 1st i will let everyone know and we will contact you if you want it so if you found this video helpful please like, subscribe, all that happy crap, and you can win the Tumblr. I have a handful of laser videos coming your way here in the next month or two, or maybe sooner, I don't know. Some different variations of lasers. So if you want to see that, make sure you stick around. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Quick little side note, I want to clear something up. The new machine logo that I designed, a uh, viewer reached out to me and said that they saw that new logo on Thunder Laser's website. I think it's Thunder Laser. I don't know. It's the big CO2 laser. He saw the logo on that video and told me about it. So I went and checked it out and there was some AI software claiming that they designed that logo. That is false. I designed that logo on Fusion 360. So the machine logo and the Spicer Designs logo are both trademarked. I let Thunder Laser know that and they immediately deleted that video. So I just want to clear that up. Not that anyone really cares, but I do.